Hello, hello. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching. This is the first part in a series about setting up, configuring, running the Ambernic RG35XX. Look at it. That's it right there. And we're going to be covering a lot of the basics in this video. So first things first, installing Garlic OS. This is actually well covered ground, but I'm going to throw in a few tidbits that aren't in all the other videos. So part one, obviously, we're going to install Garlic OS. Next part, we're going to cover updating Garlic OS. You're going to have that a lot. Uh, Garlic OS undergoes lots of updates, frequent updates. Next, we're going to do a dual SD card setup. A lot of people have questions about that. It's actually pretty easy, but we're going to go ahead and cover it. We're also going to cover how to install a custom skin and boot logo so you can have it looking all cool and custom. And finally, we're going to cover how to start fresh. What happens if your SD card is just, you know, failed an image or just screwed up beyond any recognition? We're going to cover that as well. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Now, first thing you want to do is go to retrogamecorps.com. This website has a lot of good information and it has the guide we're actually going to be following. Another website to go to, rg35xx.com. This website has a lot of good resources for the rg35xx, including links to the firmware we're going to be getting. So you can see Garlic OS, click download, and it'll bring us to Black Seraph's Patreon page. Now this is where you can download Garlic OS. If you scroll down to the bottom of this post, you'll find the links to download it. Now you're actually going to find two links down here. One, the micro SD card image. This is the full image. But if you're upgrading, you would get copy and paste on top of stock. But for the first time installers, we're going to go ahead and get the SD card image. Next, you want to go back to retrogamecorps.com. This website has all the links to the tools that we're going to need. And if you scroll down to the recommended software tools, first, Belina Etcher. We're going to want to download the portable version just because it's easier. The installer would work fine, but just grab the portable. No install needed. Next, we're going to need this mini tool partition wizard. Any partition manager should be fine. Um, the guide, for the guide's sake, we're just going to use this one. Let's extract these. I have 7-Zip already installed on this computer. If you need to install 7-Zip, Google 7-Zip. In 7-Zip, I'm going to choose the Extract To folder option. It's going to make a new folder with the image in it. it contains the image and the README. We're going to go ahead and open up Belina Etcher. Flash from File. Browse to the downloads. There's that folder, the garlic image. Target should be the SD card plugged in. You can see I've got a 16 gig here. Go ahead and select it, flash it. And thanks to fast forwarding techniques, this is going a lot faster than it will be on your computer. But once it's done, go ahead and close Belina. And I wasn't seeing those drives, so I ejected the card, put it back in. And putting it back in, you're going to get these messages, at least in Windows. You can go ahead and cancel. We're going to go ahead and check this PC. You can see G, H, I, and J. First partition G. And the second partition would be J. Although you can see here, J although having files is only 3.15 gig. So we're going to have to go and fix that. That's where we use partition wizard. So we downloaded that. Go ahead, install partition wizard. Go ahead, make sure we use the free edition. Don't call home, next, 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 and Partition Wizard's installed. 
can see down here at the bottom, that's my SD card. Fourth partition down there, that's what we want to extend because we're not seeing the entire capacity of the SD card. So extend on this. I'm just going to basically slide that slider all the way to the right, maximum size, which is on this card 11.11. .11. If you've got a bigger card, for instance, you know, this is only a 16 gig card, so most cards are probably going to have a lot more free space. Go ahead, we're going to apply that down at the bottom left. Speed this up. Done. And there we go. We now extended it, so we're using the whole capacity of the card, which in this case is only 14.2 gig. But while we're still here, let's go ahead, rename this partition. First partition is going to be MISC. Um, just to keep it in mind when you're upgrading it, this is the MISC partition. And for convenience, we're going to name that last partition ROMs because that's what we're doing with that. That's the ROMs partition. Now let's get out of partition wizard. While we're here, we're going to go into this first partition. We're going to create this wait for USB file. This enables controller support. So copy wait for USB. I'm going to go ahead, right click in the partition and make a new text file. Now, one thing, I need to see this extension. So I'm going to go to view, file name extensions. Now I can see the text. Go ahead, rename it to wait for USB, no extension. It'll give you a warning. Go ahead, click yes. Now we're going to open up that second partition and we're going to add a game just to make sure everything works. So ROMs, we're going to do a Nintendo game. So FC, Famicom, this is original Nintendo, putting in the classic Alfred Chicken. Here we switch over to the RG35XX booting up. There we go. And here's the menu, pretty simple. We're going to want to go to consoles, and because we've only added one game in one console, it's only going to be one in there. It's going to be the original NES or Famicom Alpha Chicken. Go ahead, click to launch it. And here we go. Classic game. Retro gaming on the RG35XX. We'll have a few seconds of Alpha Chicken for you. I'm sure everybody loves the classic platformer Alfred Chicken <laughs> when we're done we can go ahead and hit menu brings us back to the main menu and there we are we just installed garlic OS now we're gonna cover something you're gonna be doing probably a lot updating garlic OS now we're gonna want to get the copy and paste on top of stock Remember in the beginning, we need to get to Black Seraph's Patreon page, but download copy and paste on top of stock. Go ahead and extract that. We're going to need that extracted. And in here, instead of an image, you can see that there's actually two folders named MISC and ROMs. Now, the MISC folder should go in the MISC partition. You might have named it that. And basically, we just got to copy and replace all these files. Now, one thing to note, in Windows at least, if you try to just copy and paste these in here, you're going to get an error about free space. Not enough free space. It's some Windows thing. What you want to do is delete the biggest file, UL image. Delete that file. Now there's enough space. Go ahead, copy, paste. It's going to ask if you want to rewrite. Go ahead, rewrite. Done. Now, we can do the same for the ROMs partition. Although, really, the important thing here is actually that CFW, custom firmware. But there shouldn't be any harm in copying the whole thing. So, copy paste 
same after it finishes calculating it'll figure out oh you want to replace all these files go ahead and replace them we're going to speed that up overwrites all the files once it's done you're on the newest version of garlic os congratulations one small note here if you happen to be on a two card setup you're still following the same process because the CFW partition will be on your first SD card. So same process. Now we're going to talk about the dual SD card setup. Now this is actually pretty straightforward. On the left, you can see I have my personal second SD card. It's 128 gig card formatted FAT32. That's very important. It must be formatted FAT32, but I'll have more on that later. But inside this card, you can see there's only two folders, BIOS and ROMs. Those are the only two folders you need. On the copy and paste on top of stock download, you just need to go into the ROMs folder, copy the BIOS and ROMs folders from that. You're all set. From there, you can, you know, copy all your BIOS files, ROM files, have fun with your second SD card. And the big thing to remember here, we need to format this SD card in FAT32. Now you can see here, I'm downloading this utility in order to format an SD card in FAT32. Windows doesn't want to format big cards in FAT32, so you want to use something like this. Although I found that mini partition tool also does the same thing. So just remember the second SD card needs to be FAT32, no matter how big it is. Okay, now we're gonna get custom, installing a custom skin and boot logo. Now we're gonna wanna go to rg35xx.com. This has plenty of themes, skins, both the same thing, and boot logos. We're gonna go on the themes now, any of these themes will work. If anything catches your eye, go ahead. I'm going to install Tico Dark because I like the simplicity of the theme and I really like the console icons. The stock console icons aren't very descriptive, but Tico Dark actually has the console names and logos so I can tell what I'm clicking on to open, not just guessing based on the controller. But go ahead. Download that, ticodark.zip, and if we go back to rg35xx.com, you can see we can find boot logos. Same here. Go ahead, find a boot logo if you want. I'm going to download this one that looks kind of retro, but also isn't saying it's a Game Boy. I like the fact that it says, yep, Ambernick rg35xx running garlic OS. I'm going to go ahead and download that. And we're going to have to go and unzip these files. So go ahead, right click. I'm using 7-zip to extract each of them to their own folder. One, then the other. You can see they're both extracted. We're going to go to side-by-side -side mode in Windows here. First thing, we're going to do the boot image or boot logo. And you can see here, bootlogo.bmp.gz, that's in your MISC, M-I-S-C folder. We're going to copy our new boot logo over. Replace the file. And there we go. And you can see, we can actually click into this archive and you can actually see the image. It's just a bitmap, nothing special. But there it is. This is going to be on your primary SD card. And same with the skin. Even if you're using a two SD card setup, this is going to be on your first or primary SD card. You can see we're going to this Tico Dark skin folder. And we're going to take a minute and actually take a look inside this folder so you can see what's in there. Let's see these icons. And you can see, basically, it's all the icons. They're just changed a little bit. You know, we've got some slightly different uh, power meter icons, slightly different charging icons. But the real difference in this skin is here. 
in the consoles. Now, once it refreshes, you'll be able to see instead of the controllers are kind of just a graphical representation of the system, the skin we downloaded actually has the official logos and oftentimes the names of the console so you can tell what it is. Some of these are hard on the original console because these Famicom controllers look the same, a lot of the Genesis controllers look the same, and there's a handful of systems that are just a keyboard. So I like these icons. But anyway, in order to copy this skin over, you basically just copy the skin folder over the skin folder. See? Copy, paste. And remember, this is the ROMs partition, but on your primary SD card. So if you're on a two SD card setup, this is still your primary SD card. Next, we're gonna switch to the HDMI feed from our Ampernick RG35XX. You can see here our custom boot logo we applied. And once it boots up, you can see the custom skin. This Tico Dark isn't a world apart from the original skin here, but you can see all the cool console icons. Now on this I populated a lot of these folders so that you can see the icons but you can see that these icons are pretty cool. And that's all there is to it. Have fun installing new skins. Now before we go I'm going to take a moment to talk about fixing a failed SD card. Now what if your SD card you know, an image failed, something like that, or you just kind of want to start from scratch. You've got an SD card that has a bunch of different partitions. You can see here I'm going into mini partition tool and I'm just going to delete all the partitions from that SD card. Just delete them, click them, delete them. Now we have one, one line. So I'm going to go ahead, create a new partition, go ahead, call it whatever, name it whatever. If you're going to re-image it, re-image it. You can see here is a good example if I was going to turn that into a second SD card, name it ROMs. But if you are having trouble and your SD cards is just completely screwed up, this is a good way to start from scratch. You know, give your SD card a fresh start. Sometimes this can fix a lot of weird issues you might be having if you just, you know, need to start from scratch. So there you go. All right, that brings us to the end of the video. This is the first part in the series. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. And honestly, this setting up garlic OS video is just kind of perfunctory because there's a lot of garlic OS set of videos. I feel like everybody that wanted to do an instructional video regarding this device made a garlic OS set of video, but just for the sake of having it in the series, I figured I'd make it. Plus I included a few other tips, you know, fixing your SD card, dual card. Sometimes it just helps to see these things. Well, hopefully you learned something and have a good evening.